And welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. This is part 5 of our walkthrough. And in the last episode, we took care of Team Rocket. At least for now. So now we're going to be uh, heading out of Mount Moon. I could have sworn there was like another item around here. Ah, first we have to run into a stupid random encounter. And a stupid Paris that we really don't want to fight. Oh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention very quick before I move on any further. I went out and caught a few more Pokemon. I did not advance the plot by any means, but I did add further um, additions to the team. Like here, first of all, I have a Pikachu here. I caught a, Nidor a Nidoran male and turned into a Nidorino for now. Uh, hang on one second. Okay, sorry about that. I just uh, got interrupted slightly. It gets interrupted again. Okay, Paris, you can just go away now. I said that no one wants a Paris. Alright. Now, there's one other thing I'd like to show you very quick. I see these two right there. They are move tutors. So, you can talk to one of them, and one's going to teach you to make a punch. The other one's going to teach you to make a kick. Um, Mega Punch is reliable somewhat, but it does not hit as hard as Mega Kick, although Mega Kick is kind of inaccurate. So we're going to talk to this guy, and, um... And we're going to teach uh, someone Mega Punch. And that one is going to be actually Clefairy, because Clefairy is a normal type, at least in this generation. And she gets you benefit more from Mega Punch, so... That's what we're going to give her right now. So we're going to go ahead and give her a pound. <coughs> and there we go. We just uh, learned Mega Punch. Pretty awesome. Alright, and as far as Mega Kick goes, uh... Yeah, to be honest, I do like Mega Kick, but I don't like his accuracy too much. So we just got to leave it alone for now. Alright, so... There's an item right here. There we go, a raspberry. And up here is TM05, which contains Roar. Roar is good if you want to force uh, switches on opponents during battle. Like, um, you can use Roar on a Pokemon that um, you want to take out the one that it's very weak to, and you can just do some constant phase. And you can even do, like, paralysis in phase, or... Sleep Powder and, and um, Roar, things like that. So Roar can be pretty useful, at least in competitive battling. Alright, so now, I found a second Rare Cannon, which is right around here. And we're actually about to take on uh, Misty Cerulean Gym. So, um, yeah. Now, the reason I did keep that Rare Candy is intact here is because I do want to level up the Squirtle. And make sure he learns Bite. Because Misty's Darmy is part psychic, and we would have a dark attack, so we actually have a way of dealing super effective damage to it. Alright, so we sell the star piece that we just got. Nice. Money is pretty easy to come by here. Y you'll get why in a few moments. So let's actually buy some super potions. Four should do it. And... Let's see how many Pokeballs do we have? We have five Pokeballs. Yeah, we should be fine. Okay, so... Let's start off with the Rare Candy. I know... Um... <coughs> for Rare Candies, it does kind of get rid of the, uh... EVs you originally vested into your Pokemon. But to be honest though, um, I'm not doing for a competitive battling for this walkthrough, so I'm just leveling them up normally. Oh, what? Squirrel's evolving? Wait, not yet, not yet. Not quite yet. Haha, <laughs> that's right. Stop evolving. Alright. Now this rare candy's about to pop up. Level 18, alright, there we go. Now Squirrel wants to learn Bite. 
it's, it is, an, as of second generation anyway, a dark type move. In first gen, it was a normal type move. So, we shall actually get rid of, uh, Tackle. Because Squirrels aren't really known for physical offense anyway. So, why not? And there we go. Squirrel now knows Bite. I mean, I could have put a Toss Squirtle Mega Kick, but to be honest, uh, I much rather prefer, um, not giving him Mega Kick, or anyone Mega Kick for that matter. I like the damage, I just don't like the accuracy. Anyways, there's War Turtle. Alright, there we go. So now we're actually ready to take on Misty. So Misty here specializes in water type, for those of you that uh, that don't know. Um, Misty can be difficult to take up to go up against. If you're really not prepared, of course. <coughs> so I figured it'd be, be it would be in our best interest to at least try. Oh yeah, and the cool thing about Bite is it actually has a chance to flinch, so because a war turtle should be a little bit faster here, he's um Yeah he yeah, because Dark in this generation is special as opposed to being physical, so and the water Pokemon here, anyways, tend to have pretty low, uh, defense. Special defense, excuse me. So I figured it should be worth a try anyways. Yes, it is to be, Lewis. You just got beat by another water Pokemon. And I'm just uh, taking on the, um, other trainers just for the, just for the experience, pretty much. Not much else there really is to it. And there is a Goldeen. Lovely. Nice, a crit. And Tail Whip. As if it would really matter. Because the next bite is definitely going to destroy that Goldeen. And there we go. I know there are other strategies you can do. Like get a Grass type Pokemon ready. Like a... A Ivy Sword with with uh, Vine Whip, or if you have like a Grass Pokemon like Bell Sprout or Oddish, Pikachu with the uh, Thunder Shock. But I'm gonna be going for the War Turtle strategy here. All right, and I'm gonna go into the Berry Pouch for a second, and we're gonna do the uh, Prism Berry because Prism Berry can give it confusion as soon as it's as soon as it's afflicted. So. We definitely want to avoid confusion from Misty's Water Pulse. Yes, in this generation, Water Pulse can actually um, inflict confusion. So, that's going to be pretty annoying to deal with. So, we're just going to save our game very quick. And there we go. Now, we're about to take on Misty. She gave me a pretty hard time. I remember my early days as a Pokemon fan when I first played this generation. But then again... I was using a fire type against a water type, and that didn't exactly work out very well. Though it wasn't until I learned later the grass types were actually the way to go. Now you might be thinking Harden's gonna raise his defense, and it does, but it won't really affect the um, damage from Bite very much. This water pulse from the Star U. Not very effective. Alright, good. No confusion proc. Alright, there's a confusion proc, and this is why we wanted the prism berry. So, unfortunately, that had to come in the most inconvenient time. But we do give her a star you at least. Alright. I do have other backup plans just in case. So I do I still have the Pikachu ready. In case Warto should go down. There's Starmie. And there's Swift. Starmie's looking for Swift considering it's their only. Offensive move that can actually deal to the War Turtle. Um, just going for another bite, actually. 
Time to really go for another Swift. All right, so Super Potion, where are you? There you are. There we go. So we should have this matchup won, pretty much. So one more bite, and there you go. Misty's done. Alright, water grew to level 20. So yep, that was actually pretty well handled, if I say so myself. <coughs> Alright, so now we got the Cascade Badge. And we're also going to get the TM3, which does contain Water Pulse. As a matter of fact, we are going to give Water Pulse to War Turtle. Because to be quite honest though, uh, War Turtle is best suited for Water Pulse. And it will give him a really strong water move, so... We can get rid of Water Gun. And now War Turtle can rock with Water Pulse. Awesome. Alright, so we defeated Misty pretty easily. We did have to use a person berry after all. And really, thank god we had that ready. Alright, so, but we're not quite done yet here. Nope. I'm just gonna take on uh, one other important Pokemon battle, and then I think we can definitely call it a part. Now, one thing I want to show you very quick here is, right here, is we can do in-game trades, as we call it. Basically, you trade a Pokemon for another one of their Pokemon. For example, this guy one hit right here wants a Poliwhirl. He'll trade us for a Jinx, which we don't have a Poliwhirl yet. Uh, we might go for the in-game trade Jinx, but we might not. Over here is a bicycle shop, but unfortunately we can't get that yet. That costs, let's say, way too much Poke Dollars. We'll be able to find it later. Alright, so, next part of the walkthrough here is we go up here, and this is the Nugget Bridge. And this is where we meet Gary, our old rival. Alright, so here we go. Rival Gary would like to battle, and he sends out Pidgeotto. Now, for Pidgeotto, you would want a electric type, which I have right here, or a rock type if you happen to catch a Geodude. And make sure he learns a uh, rock throw. Thunder Shock. Almost does the amount of damage I would like for it to do. Alright, there's a static, which is good because it paralyzes the Pidgeotto. No need for Thunder Wave there. Ah, 1 HP, really. Let's do a quick attack of our own to finish the job, and there we go, Pidgeotto down. Alright, Rattata. Uh, didn't bring a Mankey with me, but I did bring in someone new along, so let's bring them all out. Nidorino. And we got Double Kick. And we gotta take full advantage of that. Cause Double Kick is a fighting type move. Um, the thing about Nidorino is you could evolve into Nidicane whenever you want, as long as you got the Moonstone. The thing is though, um, what you call it? It does learn other moves like Flatter and Horn Drill and, and Fury Attack, but to be honest, none of those moves are really, um, particularly worth it. At least in my opinion, they're not worth it at all. So you better have just turn him into a uh, Nidicane pretty much immediately. So I can learn Thrash. Thrash is a really strong move. And let's actually test out Mega Punch actually since we have Clefairy out here. Kablamo! And finally Bulbasaur. 
which is why we're going to have a Butterfree out here, actually. Because Butterfree can just tank Bulbasaur's Vine Whip no problem. So let's do a little Sleep Powder action. Grr, it missed. And I got the Sleep Powder on me first. Great. Come on, Butterfree. You are better than that. Uh, I don't have an Awakening either. Shoot. Well, I guess we could just hope our luck. But yeah, thankfully though, yeah, one damage off Vine Whip. That's because Butterfree being a Bug Flying type can just super resist Grass type moves. Surprisingly enough, it's not going for Leech Seed. This is pretty hilarious, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> Alright, Butterfree woke up, finally. There we go. There's the sleep powder I was looking for earlier. And wow, almost a one-shot. Bulbasaur already woke up. <laughs> it puts me back to sleep. What the hell? Really? And watch, I'll probably just do more chip damage with Vine Whip. Vine Whip doesn't even have enough power points to take out the Butterfree. <laughs> so here we go. Come on now. There we go. You woke up. Thank you. And down goes the Bulbasaur, finally. That's right, I did win. What'd you think about that, Gary? And he went to, it basically tells us that he went to Bill's house and just got new Pokemon as Pokedex and whatnot. So, now we're going to move on to the Nugget Bridge. Unfortunately, we will have to wait till next time for that. In the meantime, thanks for watching. As we get the fame checker.